gently into gameplay right now. Can't even talk. Such a big deal. I'm going to let you guys do your thing. I'll jump in when I can, but I will say this. Fantastic work already. Let's see what we can do in this final grand finals. It's Eric. It's Huff. Gang, over to you. All right. So with Eric coming out of the winner's bracket, Huff has to defeat Eric in two sets in order to win. Yeah, there is now $3,000 on the line for whoever is able to get first place and 1500 for whoever comes out of it. But, you I mean, we have, we talked a little bit about momentum. You know, if you're Huff, you can really take a strong game like what you had up against Fractal and force Eric to have to play to your level. Because Eric, we known Eric to be this player to really survive on level 29, not a player that goes for too much aggression, but Huff right. showed an yeah. amazing balance of 29 aggression and survivability. And in the case yeah. of even that matchup against Fractal, if Huff builds up a lead like that, you know, they're gonna put Eric in a tough position. Yeah, actually, if Huff keeps up that momentum and forces a large chase down that Eric can't keep up with. That's something that's unique to TEC that Eric might not have to have to deal with before. This isn't the CTWC anymore. We're not playing on the 8-bit system. That two-minute chase down timer was a factor. And in the case of in the case of Fractal was able to complete the chase down, but will that be the same case for Eric? We'll have to see, but you know, oh, what? Uh, once again, GG is to Fractal. Amazing games played, and I'm not sure if you noticed after those two games that Huff won, Fractal, like the misdrops that were plaguing Fractal, just seemed to disappear. Yeah. Like it was beautiful play from both players, and I mean Fractal winning second in the World Championship and now winning third in this, like all of the over the course of two weeks. That's right. Truly, truly phenomenal. And, you know, that, that's something to be proud of. Yeah, you are in an elite tier of player that is in that is the best at classic Tetris in the world. If you're able to get this far, you know, multiple events, uh, two of the biggest ones that there were, CTWC and this. Yeah, that's amazing. Enjoy that prize money. <laughs> Fractal. And as I said before, you cannot get competition of this caliber unless you have other players that push you so everybody wins everybody pushes each other forward and into a whole new level of skill that we've never seen before that's been the theme of our community and of this game from the very beginning as of right now you know matches underway both of these players are looking very strong early on huff harnessing that momentum that insane energy that was generated and we're kind of seeing it in the way that Huff has been stacking in this game, having a lot of efficient solves, very minimal burns. Yeah. And a couple of tricky pieces over here for Huff. Yeah, it's and... going to be hard to clear those without creating new. Oh, opens that up. That was good. That's what you need to do. You're saying, Chris? <laughs> At this point, you know, it's almost hard to be surprised by the way that these players are able to navigate through some of these digs. But it's just from at least from a player perspective, just always gratification of just them being able to showcase this high level of play and to also have it recognized on such a huge stage as this. Yeah. I mean, how many highlight reels have we made today? Too many? Game Scout is gonna be, I don't know, having too much work to do, I guess. But uh, I think we're all gonna be appreciative of you know, the, the content that is created from this uh, little event called the Honda Fan Cup. And I really hope that they consider Tetris Effect Connected for the years of the Honda Fan Cup in the future, because uh, this has been quite the ride and uh, just getting this kind of exposure uh, is something that we really appreciate. Oh, yeah. Right now, Huff finally getting exposure to that hole in the center and gets an eyepiece to fill it in. So Tetris ready, still That's incredibly right. close, separated by less than a Tetris. And 
Puff is actually able to use it to capitalize. Eric is having to do some burning. Yeah. So yeah, Huff looking to try to increase the lead here. But Eric right back in it. Tetris ready. Yeah, we are nearing the transition here. One more Tetris for Huff. Gonna get knocked down two quick Tetrises right there. And we are synced on pieces, so that means Eric wasn't able to utilize a different long bar for a Tetris. There it is, yeah. transition for Eric and Huff, 542 to now 497. And, ooh, really nice setup over there for Huff. Waiting for the JPs. Gonna go for the spin instead. Eric getting a little messy, opts to burn down from the top. Let's see what happens with oh, this. Oh, that dirty. Up for the dirty. And is getting punished, Hard. but Gets out of RG it. had mercy at the last second. Still needs a log bar, but uh, I had to use it. Wasn't able to use it in the well. Yeah, this, and oh. that's it. Oh, not sure if that was intentional, but it works wow, out. That, that agile T spin there is a thing of beauty. Wow. And all wow. waiting for the piece for the triple. Yeah. That's going to be another triple, but now it's set up for Tetris. Oh, yeah, that, that was so clutch. Just the way that played out. Boom, Tetris for Eric. Now, the issue Such is Huff nice. has a 100,000 point lead. Yeah. 121,000. And we've already seen Huff likes to put pressure on his opponents, really disrupt their rhythm. And if Huff can do that successfully on 29, force Eric out of his comfort zone of, you know, survivability. That lead is growing, right. So if you force someone like Eric who's used to lining out in 29, that could be the X factor. Yeah, as of right I mean, now no. though, strong game from Huff here. Yeah. So Huff going into 29 with the ability to Tetris. We could see a new way to play this. Oh, oh no, Eric! That looks like a fatal misdrop. Yeah, that's gonna be a top out from Eric and Huff takes the first round. One step on the path to the bracket reset. Uh, before that happened, I was gonna make a comment because I was trying to remember I don't know how many consecutive maxed out plus scores Huff has gotten. Oh, that's true. Like, I was thinking about just thinking about Huff's previous games and the overall consistency that Huff has shown. That had to, there's been so many just back to back max plus games. I mean, heck, the game up against Fractal, what was that borderline, uh, you know, back to back minimum 1.4 plus? Yeah. Yeah, I, I lost track because you see so many epic games back to back. They all kind of blend together into this. Well, I guess you can call it the Honda Fan Cup because that's what I'll be remembering about this. It's an amazing day of Tetris action. More Tetris than you can handle. Three, two, one. Tetris, 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 Tetris. We are off to game two of this first of two possible sets of having to win the set to get to the next set. Yeah, and you know, this is, even though these two players matched up in the second week of Honda Cup, we saw a very different position. It was Eric coming from the lower bracket and Huff was coming from the winner bracket and Huff was able to take that and decide her three to two. Now Huff, you know, potentially having to kind of replicate that, but having to do it twice and yeah. there are no guarantees going up against Eric. That's right. But we do see a stylistic difference. Huff really just pushing the Tetrises, even at 29. And uh, if, if that is the strat, if that is what it takes to take out Eric, well, the only thing to have happen is to see it happen. Or will Huff push Eric to make those Tetrises and answer and we will uh, see new, new records being smashed to pieces. I'm not sure if I can take another world record. I'm going to be completely honest with you, because, I mean, there's only so far you can go before you break what was scored at CTWC. Yeah. And 
there's only so many levels you can go before you have to um, before we actually find out whether or not enhanced programmed weird colors in the classic score tech. I mean, we'll, we'll just edit in at post. <laughs> yeah, we'll get Trey on it. He'll have to build Trey Vision for uh, TEC. Yeah. <laughs> but starting this game, quite the efficient start here. I mean, we are neck and neck. <laughs> yeah. They're both players leaving it all out, not giving an inch. But I really do like just that underlying theme of, well, records are being smashed, so the next time one gets broken, well, it's time to not just advance in the bracket, but to reclaim that record. You know, just because. Players just really pushing each other on so many different levels. You would not have that happen without a strong and wonderful community. If you love what you're seeing here, be sure to check us out on Classic Tetris on Twitch for more great matches, also on YouTube. And definitely thank you to the Honda Fan Cup, to Honda and Xbox Game Pass for making this all possible. All of the games here in the Honda Fan Cup are on Xbox Game Pass, so what a great showcase of what's possible and uh, you know, even being able to uh, compete on games for cash prizes, you know, $10,000 prize pool per, per game. Oh, nice dirty Lepo Tetris over there for Huff. But yeah, I mean, I'm an avid user of the Game Pass and the times when I'm not calling uh, record-breaking matches or playing myself, I like to play quite a few games that are on Game Pass. And Tetris Effect Connected is one of those games. <laughs> As it is, I mean, I've got that on several platforms, but having it on Game Pass just makes it, you know, convenient and the, the go-to. Yeah, I got to start training my younger siblings so then they can become uh, the next world champions. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting younger and younger. Um, you know, we were kind of joking around that the Honda Fan Cup is actually a chance for... Uh, the older champions to have a chance for the next next generation comes and uh, wrecks house, you know, because uh, you know Dog and Andy can't enter it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it that... is interesting that you know Eric actually is the world champion now and uh, is legally eligible to enter the Honda Fan Cup. Whereas the previous yeah. world champion was not. 448, or make that 471 to 473, separated by two lines here. This, we are. Go ahead, Chris. Neck and neck. <laughs> we are neck and neck. Neck and neck, ladies and gentlemen. Gosh, can't you believe that we are neck and neck? But 19 yeah. plays at hand, and Huff is, you know, demonstrated just. I'm just keeping the momentum going like it, it's insane the amount of consistency Huff has displayed over yeah, these Huff like past few games. A Tetris machine at this point. You know, breaking the records and performing, you know, almost as if on program. I mean you can have someone write a script, but you still have to have your actors and performers carry it out what a performance <laughs> what a performance indeed chris i love that <laughs> and ooh, let's see Brilliant. what huff actually does here oh are we gonna see it oh i'm not entirely sure uh, yes yeah, so huff is gonna have to do some burning here looks like was potentially holding out for an o and didn't quite get it but not bad, not bad. oh sure. eric was also up a little high. So neither player transitioning clean per se. Eric in a... Okay, all right, all right. Eric is going to be fine. Yeah, Eric with the high risk maneuver there to keep the scoring potential as high as possible. Yeah, Getting I mean, a little dangerous, but coming out just fine. 
I know we know these players are capable of rolling. They have the speeds to survive it, but it's not just about the speed. It's about your accuracy. Can you get pieces where they need to go, when they need to go? And Eric did a fantastic job of demonstrating that, but now it's Huff's turn. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, Ooh. my piece came just at the right time. Just needs one more. Another. Uh, one more needs to come, and it's not there. Oh. And Eric is gonna take a round. We are 1-1. One, one. I mean, that's just a tough situation right there. You you were handed a lifeline with that eyepiece, but you needed two, and the second one just did not come. Yeah, that's the importance of keeping that well open to the point where you could burn off pieces on the right side, and one lapse in board health, and you could find yourself topping out suddenly just like that. But here we go. Both of our games actually ending earlier in level 19. And, you know, I feel like there could be, you know, something like these players are like psyching themselves out. They're like, all right, I need to be as efficient as possible. Cause I know Eric, in the case of Huff, he's like, oh, I know Eric can survive really far in 29. So I need to generate as much as the buffer as possible. Yeah. Or in the case of Eric, is like, all right, I know Huff likes to go crazy with Tetris's on 29. I need to make sure the gap doesn't grow too big so I have enough time to make a chase down. Huff with a really nice dirty there. Dirty Tetris for Huff. But yeah, you are definitely have a point where they could be thinking each other out. They could be, it, it could be either that or maybe a little bit of burnout um, from having such a long day. Like, that's got to affect you somehow. Yeah, just, you know, the fatigue and these players having to... There's, a, there's so much at hand when it comes to high-level Tetris play. And to be able to maintain all those different aspects, it is incredibly, you know, impressive that these players are able to do that and battle, you know, mental fatigue, physical fatigue, all at the same time. Yeah, and given what's happened today, the amount of energy, you know, to break those records and to set all these, I don't know, set new records and consistently increase, you know, raise the bar for everybody else left in the field and then smash it again multiple times during a day. Like, humans only have so much potential. To, you know, they, they can only do so much in a day, but what they've done here just astounding in terms of you know the level of tetris the level of skill uh just being executed before our eyes here and yeah, eric getting a little bit risky over there with all those yeah. z pieces but is able to get an eye piece to bring it down but i mean we'll, we'll probably have to see if anyone in production can help us with this but i wonder today alone how many world records were broken yeah Once again, we wouldn't have this opportunity to display essentially world championship caliber Tetris on Tetris Effect Connected, you know, if it wasn't for the Honda Fan Cup. Yeah. Like, I know we and keep here, hammering it in, but we are really grateful. Here on official Xbox Twitch channel, it doesn't get better than this. Thank you so much, Xbox. Yeah, but right now, Eric finally bringing the stack down into a position where he can score. Yep. Just was really kind of, you know, stuck in like this limbo of uh, surviving but not scoring. Okay. He chooses to move the well over to the right, and we have a textbook Tetris set up. Just need the long bar to complete it. Ooh. Game says no. Eric. Nice adjustment right there. It's gonna knock down a Tetris, but that hole is gonna prevent another one from being scored. But the triple's good enough. Eric will settle for the triple and choose to build off of row two there. Well, taking another triple. So, score there. Huff's gonna be able to take advantage of that somewhat. And Huff did have the point lead for a moment there. You're nearing, you're just around two thirds through the pre-transition and Huff with a slight advantage 
in terms of a uh, potential before transition. Yeah. Less blinds than Eric. Enough bang down another Tetris. Eric with a lot of overhang there. It's yeah. gonna be in a dig for a while. Oh, this could get dangerous. Oh my gosh. All right. Wow. Still surviving. That. Yeah, that's the right thing. You gotta turn that into another double. And opens it back up. Oh, doesn't use the long bar in there. Might wanna burn it off from the top, I guess. Yeah, it's actually gonna try and get axed. Oh my gosh. No what? way. What? It, uh, that's incredibly aggressive and it's getting punished for it. Yeah, Absolutely the game punished. Was... Transition is only a couple lines away. Yeah, Eric might want to get that board under control now. No better time than the present. A what? He's going to try to get a Tetris out of that? All right. Okay. Goes this this is low enough, but Eric is still so peace dependent. All right, that's perfect. That's perfect. Small miss drop, but... Oh, holding out for a piece doesn't quite get it. Yeah, it's probably going to be in a dig mode for a bit longer. And even then, it's starting to become troublesome. Oh, nicely. It nice. Closes the hole there. Oh, waiting for an L piece. There it is. That's perfect. Oh, perfect. Oh. All right, there's a split double. And there it is. Oh. Eric is going to survive a little bit longer. Not quite clean. But wait, what? Going for Eric passing up on a lot of these burns has kind of led to a couple more issues and solutions. Yeah. There it is, Eric finally down below the next box. Props to Eric for surviving. Going for the 30. Oh my goodness. Still going for Tetris. 30. Yeah. That is the consolation Tetris or getting out of the dig. What? Huff, actually, wait. Oh, I think wait, Eric had a mischief there. Is now double long bar dependent. Gets one yeah. of them. Takes a split double. That's what you need to do. Looking to burn the roof off that well. Bangs down a triple with that. And this is going to allow Huff to take a lead now. 56,000 points. Yeah, but surprisingly, Huff has not been able to capitalize on, you know, that entire dig to his full potential. I mean, we're talking about Eric burned through 200,000 points of scoring potential on post-transition, maybe a little bit more. And Huff is only up yeah. by 70,000. So. so there might have been something about that P sequence that's not favorable to either player, but yeah, definitely one of the biggest digs I've ever seen. Yeah, but right now Huff is clean and is back by almost three, three levels. Yeah. Yeah, Puff now ready to take him out of this round. And we actually have a pretty interesting position here because Eric is going to hit 29 first by a yeah. long shot. And no, so what that means for Huff... No score lead, so... And so Huff might be in a position that Eric has been comfortable with, you know, being able to line out. But also, what we've seen from recent play from Huff, I don't know anymore. Yeah, I mean, there could be, like, some new crazy meta where you get so far ahead in points, and then you go all aggro post-29, and you get something like a 400,000-point lead, and then you just top yourself out and say, have at it, bro. That could be something at play, because there it is. Eric goes to 29. Huff is still at level 27. And... Eric is behind in score. Oh, there's one Tetris. Oh. I have to correct the stack, though. Wow. That's a lot of long bars falling there. Long bars to plenty. Yeah, so Eric has to essentially bring this as, as far as needed. In fact, this is just a tough situation for Eric. Huff now goes... And, oh, Huff is setting up. And oh, there it wow. is. Yeah. Oh, this is... That's a big oh. score lead. And it's set up right. for the triple. Here we go. Is Huff going to maintain the aggression? He does! Another Tetris! A 
Watch Eric nice also team. going for Tetris oh. too. There's a 32 Tetris for Eric. Oh, Huff is setting up for a center well. And, but back oh to my what? goodness. What is going Both on? Players are raining Tetrises. Eric is fully capable of making these Tetrises post 29 speed. Yeah, he's preventing Huff from really increasing the lead to dangerous levels. Yeah, the weird thing about this is that because Eric is on a higher level, the Tetrises are actually worth a little bit more. Wow, Eric set up for Tetris again. Oh, these pieces though, long bar dependency. No way. Okay, still gonna bring this down. Wow. That's All right, had to take that triple. Yeah. Oh, Huff is oh, ready. Set up for Tetris. Oh, had to take that burn. Yeah. Ready wow. again? Smart moves. Had to take another triple. Yeah. Oh, yeah, almost had it there, but uh, sacrificed the board health there a bit because of that misdropped L. Both of these players now having to do some work here. 35 for Huff, 37 for Eric. Yes, yeah, the lead is survival. Yeah, both players. Oh, just... Eric! Eric is just going to oh, wow. out. Eric not able to maintain it. Huff taking that round. Huff is on the verge of a bracket reset now with the momentum. And the lead didn't really change. So they essentially matched each other's efficiency on on uh 29 and there was a 37 piece drought somewhere on 29 oh my gosh yeah huff with a convincing lead going into the kill screen speed and able to continue playing a very different outcome than we're used to seeing but yeah we're not even near done yet just a couple more games to go and huff on the verge of a bracket reset yeah, what an excellent game from Huff. And, you know, props to Eric for surviving that situation going into transition. But I, I'll, that also put Eric in such a compromised position. And w when you actually think about it, this all started from that one notion to not take the burn. Eric wanted to go a bit more aggressive. And as a result, got put in a, I think that was like a five level burn. Yeah, that, that was uh, the longest dig I've seen all day. Big dig. Very big dig. But nice little dirty Tetris over there for Eric. So yeah, just... Uh, Amazing Tetris being played out here. And, but what stood out to me is that Eric was going for the Tetrises. Fully capable oh, yeah. of the aggression. Not to and, Tetris line out. And, I so mean, you know what that means for the future, yeah. It, that has a lot of implications. But, it does. You know, at the it same does. time, the way that Eric was going for Tetrises, like, there was almost no burns being taken you know, it only, burns came in when we start running into that drought territory around level 34, level 35. Eric was knocking down Tetris, like after Tetris, trying to prevent Huff from getting, you know, a potential lead. Because when we start talking about, you know, leads that are going to be incredibly difficult to, you know, get in two minutes, we start getting into that 300,000, 400,000 range where you need 10 Tetrises on level 29 plus speed in order to chase that down, you know, yeah, that's going to be incredibly difficult, and Eric wanted to prevent that. Yeah, yeah, proactively going after them. Like, wasn't in a position where he needed to do it yet, but was already, I guess, minimizing the damage. So, uh, definitely showcasing the skill and just, uh, you know, pushing that limit. And uh, it's leading to where we're going to see this game go next, which is aggressive play post-29. That's where we're headed. It was truly phenomenal. And I'm really curious to see, you know, how things go, especially when we talk about just TC exclusive. You know, more people pick this up and, you know, transfer their ability to roll, or, you know, in the case of, you know, like Broden and Scotto, Smooth and uh, Lay, being able to tap, you know. If another Honda Fan Cup happens with Tetris Effect Connected, you know, with a lot of these players being around, you know, the age of, you know, 18 or older, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if like, hold on a second, there's actually, you know, 
something that I can earn here and I don't have to just wait till CTWC. And it's going to be interesting to see how the TC uh, classic score attack scene develops competitively. Yeah. Yeah, no, it looks like uh, it's healthy and it's growing and it's great just to see this level of competition. It's, it's a real treat to, to, to see this. I mean, I, you know, we thought the Tetris season would end in October and it didn't. And we're getting these great, amazing matches. And there's so much more entertainment for fans of classic Tetris and of video gaming in general just to enjoy it. So yeah, let's see some more of this. More of this, please. I will say, I admit, I thought there'd be, you know, maybe another year before Rollers broke uh, TEC. And uh, it, was just, it was just a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, just uh, if you build it, they'll come. And uh, here we are. Oh, yeah. I got both players. Kind of got into it. Oh, yeah. the hangs for Eric. Oh, no. Oh, that's dangerous. IP needs to come right now. Right. And the hang. hang. Huff complete the, the bracket reset. We are both in lower bracket and have a bracket reset. This is it. This is. Both players are now on equal footing. The showdown has begun. Wow. Oh my goodness. Let me ask this question. It feels like the right one at this moment. Were you expecting this? Because it feels like it came to a sudden halt. Drama, the prestige, and then finally, Huff said, no, no, this is enough. I'll take it from here. Uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I was expecting it. I mean, to be honest, yeah. nothing could really be expected. No, no, nothing that happened today. Like, how could we uh, how could we expect that? Well, let's go straight in as we see this here. And yeah, I will. Looks uh, like, yeah, look at this. It looks like they just want to go at it that, that hard, that fast. Uh, no rest for the wicked here in Classic Tetris. And this is a Let's good go. reminder to everybody that we we were going best of five for the rest of the tournament. And of course, this is best of seven. Is that correct, gang? Here in our grand finals? Or am I missing that? I can't remember. We have more Tetris to play is what I'm trying to say. Everybody <laughs> hold their horses. Get the reins on those horses because Huff said, yes, okay, I got this, but let's do this business right now. Yeah. So I, I think we're still best of. It's the best of seven now. I'm not sure. I'm That's I a good question, gang. I thought it was yeah. best of five, but you know what? Things happen, and let's be clear. It is best of five. Okay, this has been a, a, out of control, unprecedented, regardless. So. <laughs> More Tetris than you can handle, right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Gang, Chris has had some really good lines this week. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, you know, Sharky, you of course as well, but Chris has been really, really going for it. And I'm not just talking about the uh, the, the neck and neck comments, which have been on point. Yeah, the memes are fun, but I hope that whatever I say can be entertaining to, you know, our, it's a potential audience, right? Like, you know, you want to get people into it and make sure everybody has fun, so that's what I aim for. <laughs> yeah, but here Eric we go. Eric building up way high. And, oh, taking a triple oh. there. That's with a couple of dead drops there. I wonder there might have been an issue, but we will see. It seemed more intentional. Just intentionally yeah. creating the overhangs. Yeah, create the overhang for a tuck later. I just don't see that happen too often. Usually there's a shift with intent and not just uh, straight down to the middle of the screen. Yeah, 215 for Huff, 227 for Eric. And I mean, we talked about, you know, how Huff was gonna come out of the Fractals game with you know, the mom all the momentum and yeah. Eric was gonna be forced to match that. Yeah, I mean, was Eric playing Guitar Hero during the break? Because that was a pretty long break, especially when you have to, or maybe, you know, he was watching that match uh, between uh, Huff and Fractal. And uh, one thing that, you know, we noticed, all of us noticed during TWC was that Eric and Fractal were the rivals. They were the ones pushing each other. And if you see Fractal go out like that to Huff, 
makes me kind of wonder what Eric is thinking right now. Yeah, but whatever he's thinking seems to be working somewhat as we are borderline neck and neck here. 319 and now 331. Eric's going to increase that by a Tetris and same will huff. And oh, nice overhang over there for Eric. Yeah, that was beautiful. Exactly how you want to set up a tuck to keep your play field super clean. That's one for the, uh, I wouldn't say highlight reel, but for the study uh, materials that will likely be coming out of this amazing day of Tetris. When humanity is gone and forgotten, you know, whatever aliens visit this planet will dig up these records and be in awe of the amazing Tetris on display here at the Honda Fan Cup 2022. So far, whoa, hold on a second. We got quite the game at hand. Like, we are looking at some of our higher transitions out of this particular matchup, and that's saying something, considering how, on average, their transitions have been pretty high. Yeah. Now they're definitely going for efficiency. But, of course, you know. The, the thing that for, you know, both of these players, they have to put together all aspects of the game in order to, you know, take this championship. Eric D, Eric has been bracket resetted. He has no second chance. He has to win this match if he wants to be the first ever Tetris Effect Connected Honda Cup World, well, essentially world champion. We, we can call it that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the Honda Fan Cup, first one ever. And, uh, you know, money on the line. It's important. It's, uh, it's a major, you know, it's... Uh, what esports players want to use their skills towards, right? The big one, and this is definitely one of those. Yeah, so Eric is going to have to, you know, Eric kind of struggled a little bit getting, you know, all aspects of the game together. But if Eric can get 18, 19 plus, and 29 under control, we can see some very competitive Tetris over these next potential five games. Yeah, a lot of it's gonna have to do with momentum. We'll see if Huff can keep that, or if Eric's gonna, you know, form a reverse sweep. <laughs> this is uh, a theme yes. that we've been seeing. Goodness gracious, 635 transition for Huff and 622 for Eric. You know, the crazy thing is, like that match that we just saw, the, the best of five that led to this bracket reset wasn't even the first between Eric and Huff. So definitely some massive, I would say, uh, I'm not even sure what the word is for it, but accumulation of rivalry, competitive rivalry, that is what we're seeing here. And it culminates in this finale. Yeah, right now, Huff having to do just a bit of down stacking. And oh, Eric's there it is. Dirty. And boom, dirty touches for Eric. 709 to now 702, but Huff is clean. There is Boom Tetris for Huff. And wow, just really unleashing a torrent of Tetrises here. Eric with a little bit of cleaning. Opts to take some doubles instead of building more dirty wells. But yeah, with those uh, holes on the bottom looming, Eric is looking to clean those out first and does so right there. It's going to be trailing slightly, but as we all know, you know, you, oh, what an adjustment over there for Eric. Yeah, just the long part coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> use the movement to dodge, covering up the hole because he saw the long bar cut. Yeah, especially when you talk about that particular, you know, you save a triple worth in lines, that could very much lead to a Tetris of gained efficiency. Yeah. But yeah, definitely the meta for the future is the player's ability to adjust and maximize every single piece and not just limit the possibilities to what's on the screen at any one given time. Yeah, but speaking about what's on the screen, 945 for Huff right now, 893 yeah, for Eric. I'm about to max out. This could be one of our higher games going in the 29 that we've seen. Yep. There it is. A million points for Huff. So 
Eric does have some catching up to do. Eric looking super clean right now. Boom, Tetris for Eric. Huff maintaining the aggression. Stacking high. Eric not in a position to score quite yet. Needs to get access to the well. All right, nice split double into a Tetris. Yep, level 28 now. Players need to get their fields in order. Just what I used to say, uh, you know, going into 19, but now it's going into 29. Because that seems to be a pretty consistent story here. Both these players, kill screen capability. Eric, getting to level 29. And now Huff. Famous Huff. Yep. Oh, Huff, Huff is actually set up. And there it is. There's one wow. and another. Wow, the adjust. How do you adjust on 29 for Eric? What? But wow, Eric's Huff now in trouble. Oh, Eric in trouble. Oh, and... no. That might not be fixable. Multiple dependencies forming, and Eric is going to top out. Huff for the 200,000 plus point lead. Uh, chooses not to bowl and it lines up there and we are in the second game just like that huff up by one so huff maintaining the momentum from from uh rap, rap ah, resetting the bracket <laughs> yeah and a 1.3 at level 31 that is some incredible efficiency yeah that's that, that's just uh not just assuring your victory but you know, making it more stressful for your opponent to even exist uh, with, with that kind of uh, score lead. Nice flat play field there for both players. Yeah, a bit more differentiation. Eric actually going to be forced to take a burn before Huff. Yeah, interesting. And oh, looks like we're running into an opening drought. Yeah, drought from the start. The game says no, no long bars for you. You thought you were gonna Tetris. Game says no. Wow. wow. Getting a long yeah. bar in this economy? What? What is this? <laughs> what, where's the eyepiece? Oh, there it is. Wow. Tetris for both Huff and Eric. Yeah, I might have to look at the stats. I mean, it probably <laughs> wasn't the biggest drought, but to start off that, a game. Yeah, that felt like. I want to say it felt like a thirty, mid thirty, uh, low forty which is still probably one of the bigger droughts that we've seen all day today. Yeah, I mean, the game has been generally more kind than we're used to. We saw some really bad ones during the qualifier weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, 68, like, uh, that number is going to be forever burned in my mind because it's like a 68-piece drought and then in that uh, particular case, uh, Lei able to uh, survive that and win that game up against Kirby. It's truly yeah. ridiculous. So yeah, today, a little kinder on the droughts, but the game can still pop them at any time. Players be on notice. Yeah, the fields are well watered here. That's a good one, Sharky. You're, you're banging them <laughs> up today too, man. Still Huff with a very slight lead. Yep, both players clean and Tetris ready for the most part. Huff needing two long bars, I guess. <laughs> okay, maybe this is going to be the round to deprive players. Yeah, but also at the same time, just, you know, this uh, deprivation is in part to just how clean these players are stacking. Like, from the opener to now, we've seen these players just show phenomenal builds. And this drought is starting to get a little bit in dangerous territory over here for Eric. Yeah, yeah. Oh Those my players god. Actually feel like oh, that's painful. Yeah. And then RNG oh, just nice mocking pepper. Eric. Okay, Eric getting out of that with the right pieces there, so surviving to be able to use them, getting those triples. That, yeah, that that's a rough... I mean, when you have someone place the Z like that, it's just like, there was nowhere else for it to go, so... Yeah. It's a dangerous place. 
I mean, where we are looking at for this game with just, you know, I think it's this one is more of one of those few games where we get to really see it. We see players whenever the pieces are falling mostly in their favor, but now we're seeing them having to deal with adversity, having to deal with these tough sequences. And it's truly a masterpiece that we're being able to survive, you know, both of these players being able to survive these tough pieces. Yeah. And to have efficiency that they have right now, because by no means are these bad scores. They're yeah, actually they're fairly good scores. Yeah, they're good scores and they are taking the aggressive risky moves. It's just that when the long bar doesn't come, they gotta chuck that thing somewhere and then that can lead to a bad situation. But they've been getting out of it and dealing with it as best as I would hope anybody could. All if we had Trey Vision to see like uh, how many, like, you know, when the major droughts hit. Cause yeah. it seems like these players have been fighting yeah, maybe we can uh, mod Trey Vision or someone could mod Trey Vision to run the video through uh, after the fact and get some stats on it. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll take a look and break it down myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be uh, interesting. I mean, today alone, just for the stat, I'm sure it's going to be a point of interest for a lot of people in, you know, who are classic Tetris enthusiasts. One of those landmark events that uh, people will remember for years to come is the Honda Fan Cup 2022. Yeah, but we are nearing the transition, and this the scores that they are putting up with this P yeah. sequence. Holy cow, that's impressive! Yeah, they're already over 500 k So yeah, this is. You wouldn't think that there were massive droughts, but yeah, they there have been. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that both of these players were in California and Texas with how brutal the droughts have been in this game. <laughs> yeah, when you said California and Texas, I, was, I thought you were uh, going to refer to a former world champion location. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, which I mean, fun fact, Eric is, you know, one of the players where the trophy finally left Texas or California. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, historically important. So maybe that's why the droughts haven't been hidden. The world champion is held by a non-drought state. <laughs> but right now, the only non-drought state we need is for this board state to be a non-drought state. And it's decent. like it's pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, they, they dealt with the uh, adversity and uh, they're here to score now. Look at this. Yeah, the Huff. A little piece of pendant gonna cover, create, uh, generate a hold there is going to need some good pieces for it. And oh, there it is. Perfect. Yep. Just like that. Huff is clean. Yeah. The scores are neck and neck. Right. 7.39 to 7.57. And well, these players are really very close in terms of where they are in the piece sequence so yeah you see a lot of tetris is being scored relatively next to each other and yeah. oh, wow wow that, you saw that right yeah yeah I, uh, adjustment inhuman and eric now forced to use some of these long bars to survive as opposed to score able to get out of it pretty quickly wow. though help does have the lead What an interesting lead. We're looking at some stellar games going into 29. Yeah. Man. Players I'm aren't giving scared. it. <laughs> now they're, they've got the efficiency, they've got the energy. Huff's got the momentum. They're trying to get it back, but you know, we've seen it happen before. Or get put on the verge of being, you know, eliminated or sent to another bracket and, you know, reverse sweeps do happen. And there it is. Maxed out for Huff and Eric now gets the maxed out as well. Yeah. That was 27. Good stuff. Yeah. Oh, nice adjustment over there by Huff. A lot of great micro adjustments being executed here. Yeah. I mean, this is, this level of play would be unbeatable in previous years. Like, this would be like what we'd consider to be, you know, godlike, unstoppable, like perfect play. 
yeah, I mean, we didn't get our first, you know, double maxed out until, you know, 2019. And even then, you know, that was, you know, some of the most insane play. Behind, full screen speed here for Eric. Oh, so Huff behind. holding out. All right, there it is. Great pieces over there for Huff. Yep. Oh, there it is. Level 30 Tetris for Eric. And, and a counter Tetris for uh, Huff. Yep. They're, they're going all the way with their aggression here. Banging down Tetrises. Huff with a triple there. Oh, Ooh. that right side for Eric. That's going to be key, getting the long bar over to the right. And, and oh, the hang. And Cat is going to top out. And Huff is going to take the second round. Huff is one game away from taking the Honda Fan Cup Tetris finale. Yes, gonna set up wow. for that last dirty Tetris right there. What it, once again, another 1.3 million. Yep. And just on 32, just, you know, scoring so well pre-29. And this is it. Eric needs to perform another reverse sweep in order to take this now. That's the requirement. Every game must be won by Eric in order to win the Honda Fan Cup. Yeah. Each game now, if Huff can win this, Huff just pockets three thousand dollars. Eric has to turn the momentum around. Has to do something, because Huff, Huff has been just unstoppable. I mean, back to back one point early one point three million. We're not talking about after you know ten or so levels of twenty nine line out. We're talking about really early, incredible efficiency play. Three, two, one, Tetris. Let's go. This. Could be the last one or the start of a momentum shifter. What will happen? Yeah, we'll definitely find out and start things off. Players gonna knock down a Tetris and boards are varying wildly, actually. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because I don't think we actually seen a lot of clone Tris today. Oh, it seems like everybody's kind of. Uh doing their own thing and uh we're, we are seeing a lot of creativity and i think that's great you know a lot of uh different styles of play i saw scott o doing like a like a right side vitz that i'd never seen before like in column nine or something that's bizarre <laughs> it was bizarre you have to, i'm sure if you check the tape out yeah you'll, you'll see that and you'll be like oh that's what Tris was talking about but yeah, I think the Tetris happened on column eight, and then the, the tuck happened on column nine, and it's just like the craziest thing I'd ever seen. Nice yeah, dirty there. Scoring a couple of dirty Tetrises there. They would have bring the stack down, but Huff's going to maintain just a slight advantage here. so interesting this situation because we've seen it before up, up by two games you know eric on the ropes Ooh, just a spin on huff there and huff's just gonna burn it down maybe and... get attention we are now neck and neck oh wow that overhang with the oh incredibly creative yeah, you know, I think this competition is really bringing out new forms of solves you know, for these players. You know, they're already at the top level of competition. What more they, what more can they do? And we're seeing, you know, that little bit of more that they can do, and that's solving things more efficiently than we've ever seen them do before. Yeah, when we talk about how play over just you can even take the last two years over the last two years have it has evolved about classic tetris you see players going for a lot more creative setups and these dynamic fluid setups have allowed for some insane increased efficiency i mean we also saw it with fractal at this year's uh, ccwc when almost had a perfect level 18 game yeah that is going for all tetrises and nothing else almost willing to sack Sacrifice the board state in the competition. Ooh. Huff was setting up a lot of like crazy tug spins and missed the spin tug. But 
Eric is gonna take a lead because of that. Yeah, a little bit of a dig, but huffed out of it. And, oh, Eric? Might be playing with a little bit of fire here. Okay, nice. Great discipline. Great placements. Open up the well. With a triple, no less. Way to, you know, extinguish that fire before it became a flame. <laughs> and oh. Okay, That's able to get the rollover. Oh my gosh. The game yeah. could have ended right there. Yeah, he's alive. That flying close to the sun there. You can see that missed movement with the T. The T had, you know, the place set up waiting for it and it just didn't happen. So Eric had to adjust on the fly to make sure that didn't turn into a total disaster. Yeah. Eric still holding on to a very minute lead. Hope that this Tetris is going to take that away from him. Yeah, it's going to be another close one. And Eric's just going to burn it all the way out. Not going to go for any aggressive setups. And Huff in need of... And JP decided not to convert the dependency. Going to hold out all the way for that JP. Yeah. Okay. Still, yeah. Okay, finally gets it open. Boom, Tetris for Huff. Eric, now yeah. Tetris ready. There is both players knocking down a Tetris. We will be reaching transition shortly. Nine lines to go. It didn't even seem that long. Like, what is going on? My sense of time is just warped. These are so good. Level 18 just passed by in the flash of, a, of an eye, or a blink of an eye. Yeah, and we'll... one more Tetris left in hand for Eric is probably going to skim. And yeah, there it is in a transition high 400. Knock one down immediately, and oh my gosh. Very solid transition over here for Huff. And guess what? It is level 19. Yep. Really clean place so far. Yeah. What you need to do. And long par seems to be taking his time. This is a bad yeah. time to go on vacation if you're Eric. And oh, oh no, Eric, that's gonna be a, okay if he gets the long bar. I can open it up. Doesn't need it. Oh, that's okay. Blood. Wow, oh, my piece came a tad bit too late, but survives. And there it is. Boom, Tetris for Eric. Well deserved. Yeah, Eric came out of that. Like, there are only a few moves that could survive that, and Eric pulls them off there. Yeah, now takes the lead with that Tetris. Huff is behind in lines, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Huff having to do uh, an orthodox Ooh. tucks and spins there, pulls them off, and uh, does try to minimize the amount of burning to keep that clean. Yeah, Eric that's taking gonna... advantage of this. Yeah, the lead increasing here. Eric being in one of the more favorable positions. Could this be the momentum shifter that Eric needs? Yeah, and Eric desperately needs it. There is no more games left for Eric to lose. Yeah. It's win or go home, essentially. Or I guess go back to bed. Hey, go back to bed, yeah. <laughs> go outside, touch grass, even though it's like nighttime here. And Eric holding out for this oh, long yeah. bar. My gosh. Yeah, like, really? <laughs> the game really is not going for it. Lately. Yeah, this is uh, testing the player's ability to survive and hold out for that long piece and try to maintain that crazy uh, score potential. Uh, now we found ourselves in a little bit of a ne neck and neck situation here. Well, neck and neck potential situation. Eric has been knocking down a lot of Tetrises. Level 29 is soon upon us. Yeah. Yeah, this game has been flying by. 
And we're going to be on 29 before you know it. Eric's still building for Tetris's. And, oh, Eric. Wow. Two. Wait, Boom. no way. Eric. Goes left oh. well. One burn line left before 29. Setting up left well, but does it with a triple. And will safely burn down instead of trying to maintain the Tetris well all the way to the left. Yeah, Meanwhile, maxed out for Eric, maxed out for Huff. This is it. It all comes down to this 29 play. Can Huff yeah, put it... things away now? Or will Eric extend the set? Yeah, Huff with a slight lead. Huff trying to go for getting position to score Tetris, is looking for some safe setups. Gonna take a triple. That's gonna be massive. But oh no, not good pieces. Oh, Huff is gonna top out. Huff topping out there so suddenly. Almost felt like a dead drop situation and uh, wasn't able to salvage it. So now a small chase are required by Eric. Has all the time in the world to do it. He's gonna line it out, it looks like. Yeah, there's plenty of time. No there rush. And there it is. Eric, once again, replicating what happened in the winner's finals, taking game number three. Snatching the broom out of Huff's hands and putting in a hit. But there's still... Eric has to win another game to bring us to a decider. Huff only needs to win one more. Here we go. Game number four. It was a close game all throughout level 18 and then even into the post transition. Hope just got into a really awkward situation on 29 and there wasn't too much that Huff could have done. And Eric just was simply able to survive a little bit longer. But there has been hope breed in Eric's tournament run. Question is, is this momentum shift enough to stop Huff's phenomenal play? Or will Huff find a way to shut things down before we go into a potential decider? So far, things are looking pretty calm here. Nothing too dangerous developing. Nice Z-spin hit there. Eric. Oh, oh my gosh. Eric's going for it. Going for it. And there it is. Boom. Dirty Boom. left low Tetris for Eric. Boom. Tetris for Huff. Interesting concept that we hear for Eric. I kind of like that. Very nicely done. Yeah, it gets a clean. Yeah, you know, this matchup has happened in, you know, a high stakes situation before. In fact, yeah. this was the exact matchup that happened in the Ohio qualifier where Huff oh. was able to beat Eric just barely. So even though these two players are currently now at a record of two and three with overall competitive matches played against each other, those matches that have been played up against each other have been, you know, some pretty high value matches. Yeah, so no better way to make a statement than take this one. Probably the last, what do you call it, high stakes match of this year, of the season, here in the Honda Fan Cup. Yeah, as of right now, Eric in the lead slightly nominally, but Huff has, well, not anymore, had to take all those burns. So Eric, going to be able to keep just around a one Tetris lead. Boom, 
Tetris over there for Huff and Eric. And other Tetris for Huff. Yeah, that last game went by so fast. I couldn't believe how fast they hit level 19 and then 29. This one, for some reason, it feels slower. I don't know. I don't know what it is. My sense of time is yeah. just completely warping now. I mean, last game, maybe it was just them just scoring an insane amount of Tetris just relatively quickly. But I don't know. It, it did feel like that particular game went by a lot quicker. I just saw a zero point differential like for a second there. They had exactly the same score. We haven't seen that too much. I mean, we see that in a lot of other uh, competitive matches, but this is like the first time I've seen it this deep into a game in, for today's matches. I mean, especially when you consider majority of the players in the Honda Cup, all the match all the matchups, there's generally been a player that pushed down at least for one point. Right. And you saw, of course, some tappers utilize the strategy of trying to uh, push down to get as far as ahead as possible to kind of force some of the uh, our rollers here to go for uh, 29 aggression. Right now, Huff having yeah. to do some burning, though. Oh, nice flat burns. Gets it done. There it is. Boom, Tetris for Huff. Needs a J piece or an I. Either or would work. Yeah, so we'll get to see soon if this is a true momentum shift. As transition is coming. Yeah, right there. Another Tetris for Huff. Games are still incredibly close, so it's not like we're going to see, you know, any dominant lead going into transition. Now, what happens on the post-transition, you know, that's, you know, remains to be seen. Yeah. And, oh, nice okay. just over there for Huff. Looks like they're really doing it. <laughs> yeah, did everything to avoid burning a single line. Might have to take a skim here, though. Or I was going to go for it. Yeah, I got to go for it all the way. Uh-oh. And he has to cover it up. Ooh. Ball is open. All right, just in time. Yeah, not too dangerous, but it could have gotten ugly. And that's why you do have to be careful. It's always tempting to go for that last Tetris. But sometimes you never know what pieces you're going to be dealt. Eric having to fill in the left side there. Not getting great pieces. All right, nice. Good getting those squares over to the left. A couple of doubles bring the stack down, and the well is open yet again. Yeah, I got scary high for a second there, but Eric was able to handle it. Yeah, right now, and beautiful spin over wow. there from Huff. Yeah, Huff and is really... Eric really somewhere was able to gain quite the lead here. Yeah, where did that come from? They were neck and neck for, like, the longest time. How did that happen? Like, I saw the zero-point differential. Like, what? Where would that come from? That's definitely an ideal position if you want to be in Eric. Oh, yeah. You want to be in Eric's shoes because Hup has been the one that has generally been controlling how the game of 29 is played. But if you right. have the lead, you essentially are going to control how Hup plays. Oh, good. Eyepiece right there. Just needs one more for a Tetris. Oh, I'm Tetris for Hup. Trying to lower this deficit. Boom Tetris for Huff. Yeah, Huff actually be able to make those long bars count. Yeah, finding some efficiency somewhere. Eric had to do a little bit of burning at the beginning of level 25. And that's what is necessary. Getting those little tiny spots of efficiency to help decrease the lead by, at this point now, 30,000 points per Tetris. A little bit more. And 
Eric having to take a triple there. Yeah, Eric wanting to fill in the board here. Not really ideal. Oh. Yeah, it's going to cause a bit of digging. This is Huff's Whoa, chance. Oh, to pretty touch us over there from Huff. Yeah, that was nice. Exactly what's needed now, too, and can take advantage of Eric having to do this dig. Close to 29, too. Okay, double max out here. Huff just unleashed a typhoon of Tetris's back to back and is now in the lead. Yeah, that was sudden. I mean, talk about match changing complexion. I've never seen it go back and forth that fast. Yeah, looks like Huff wow. right now. Oh, wow. Eric is in trouble. Eric is in trouble. Wait, that left side, Eric. Oh, the oh, hang. No, that left side. That might not, yeah, that's not going to be survivable. And Huff looks to be taking the entire Honda Cup. Your champion of the finale, Classic Score Attack Tetris for the Honda Fan Cup 2022 is Huffleupagus. What a game. And it's crazy just how fast the pendulum of that game swung. You know, we saw Eric, you know, magically materialize 100,000 points. What? Oh, this drought. Yeah, but magically materialize 100,000 points in the lead. And then in the last two levels, Huff completely turned it into his favor. Yeah, just completely must have made 100% Tetris rate at that last part and turned it around. Is insane. Like... Both these players are bending time and space and what is possible with classic Tetris in front of our eyes and we can't believe it. We can't, we can't even keep track of it. It's happening so fast. Wow. I will say that uh, Huff came into this and really showcased what I would call surgical precision here, Sharky. Surgical precision that really resulted in two things that you said that I absolutely loved, a torrent of Tetrises and a typhoon of Tetrises. And boy, was that absolutely true in this last round. Yeah, it was truly, I mean, phenomenal play. A lot of, you know, what, you know, we recognized from Huff was a lot of creative play, a lot of really efficient play. And at the end of the day, when it came down to 29, that's what allowed Huff to, you know, take these victories up against, you know, players like Fractal and Eric, where, you know, 29 survivability may be a concern for a lot of other players. Yeah, survivability or thrivability, depending on who you talk to and what round they were in. Chris, this has been certainly a tournament for the ages. You have been one of the best people to tout that, talking about historical moments. I need you to give me the, 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 the headlines now that you've ingested everything, now that we have named our grand champion. What did it take for Huff to make it through this entire crazy journey to be on top and what can new players or perhaps players that aren't pros take from that journey so consistent uh precise play as you said surgical precision getting the pieces where they need to go uh without a whole lot of misdrops huff was just off the charts uh doing creative solves clearing things but oh my goodness the level of aggression played on 29 displayed by huff and actually the other players also doing it but just huff taking that to a whole new level showing what's possible in what we used to call the kill screen and uh, new players coming in um players who are studying the game now and are maybe hoping to uh take some major championships in the future yes this will definitely be an event to study to study the solves and the speed and the way that these players are uh changing the face of competitive tetris uh, it is going to be, you know, the Tournament of the Ages, and uh, this Honda Fan Cup is uh, going to go down in history as being one of the greats. Absolutely, and Sharky, I will say you nodded emphatically when Chris was talking about reviewing that video, reviewing that tape. It seems like only, the, the, this is one of those tournaments that's going to be utilized again and again and again for those players who are looking to capitalize on this new gameplay, this new wave of combat, this new, and I use the word combat because quite frankly, Sharky, this was an all-out bloodbath in some cases. Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, we talk about a lot of the players, you know, there is a lot of creative 
scenes that were or a lot of uh, creative board states that they had to, you know, either figure out efficient solves or even make last second adjustments. And when you're saving, you know, one, two or three lines, you do that, you know, 15, 20 times, you're giving yourself so much scoring potential. And as a, you know, growing player, one of the best things you can do is study and really understand the theory behind why these players are stacking this way. Well, speaking of players, speaking of study, and certainly those players we will all study, we need to bring in the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who came out on top, Huffleupagus, a name that is hilarious, but my gosh, no one was laughing. How the heck are you? How are, how are your hands right now? How are you feeling? Good. My finger hurts, but I'm good. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I can appreciate that. Uh, what what do you think was the silver bullet for you, Huff? What was the thing that you came out on top in a lobby that is quite frankly terrifying? I don't know. I was feeling pretty good about it. Decided to go aggressive on twenty nine because of the time limit. I don't think I don't think Eric was expecting that because we usually line out against each other when we play. Is it is it is it a weird thing? And we were talking about this. I know Chris and and Sharky and I were we're all kind of mentioning this throughout the tournament. You you know you've met you've seen you've played with all of these players before. How does that change the way you come into a competition like that? It's, it it feels like something that mentally could be kind of difficult to get around sometimes. I don't know. If you lose to someone a lot, it can be tough. And if you win to someone a lot, it can be easy. So that changes things, but. I haven't played a lot of Eric and Fractal, so. You seem very of, cool. Um, new. Yeah. No, I'm, apologies. Have you? You seem very cool, calm, and collected. Uh, Chris, Sharky, either of you have have uh, some questions for our grand champion here in our world record-breaking Honda Fan Cup tournament. Yeah, I saw incredible aggression off the charts. I've never seen Tetris thing like that on level 29. Is that something you practice? Like, when, do you do like a 29 start and try to see how many Tetris you can make? What is about the way that you played now? Uh, uh, what do you think made it seem so, I don't know, it, it almost seemed like you weren't playing 29 and you're playing that aggressively. Uh, can you talk us through that? I don't know. Sometimes I warm up by going for Tetrises, but usually when I play, I just line out. So I don't, like I said, I was just trying something else. Is it a line cap? But usually I'm not that good, I think. It's definitely good. And uh, uh, like the, just the constant battle uh, between uh, you and Eric, like that was so many matches. Uh, what do you think? Do you think you've gotten better just from uh, having so many matches with Eric today? Oh, and I don't, I'm, I have played Eric a lot, no. It's uh, stressful. He's so good. He's so good at going forever. And that's like something else. Stressful. So I got to know, game four up against Fractal, whenever you were playing that out after you had won, were you, was there any score in mind that you were going for? Like, were you trying to be, you know, the highest score at CTWC? Were you just trying to take it as far as you could? Like, I really want to know. Well, I was stressed out that I, I wasn't playing with audio or anything, so I couldn't hear you guys. I didn't know if you would want me to stop or not. So I just kind of went aggressive and <laughs> just wanted to go as far as I could. Yeah, so on our audio, we were like, not only did we just, you know, win the round, but now I'm going to go and take back the world record because that's what we were seeing <laughs> unfold before our eyes. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know. World record's way off. Well, so Huff, now that you've, I mean, conceivably come through a, a, a tournament bracket that is just, I, I mean, it defies words at this point, but now that you've made it on top, you've proven yourself again and again and again and again and again and again and again. What, what's, what are you going to do next? What's your, what's, what's the next big thing for Huff here? And what, uh, what's the next tournament? What's the next big, uh, big medal you're after? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of want to go all over the place and do a whole bunch of the claws, but we'll see. I don't know which one's next, though. So. Uh, Waco is next in uh, January. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Keeping it close to the vest. I like that, Huff. That was nice. 
Awesome. Well, I gotta say, huge GGs. Congratulations. You made today's tournament absolutely riveting, and we thank you so much for being here. Is there anybody you want to say thank you or shout out to here in our last minutes? Of course. Uh, I gotta say, shout out to Puppy Ball Fan Club, MSM, um, Miles, and uh, Kingsman, I guess. And I think that's it. There it is. Well, you got a lot of love in the chat for sure. So thank you so much again, Huff. I really appreciate it. Well, and you know, that guy, my gosh, Sharky. I mean, he did supernatural things. And I will also say he did not have the easiest run. You know, he came out and he really proved himself again and again. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, it, he's definitely had, you know, possibly one of the hardest runs. I mean, to have to go through, uh, you know, the earlier Brad kids might have been easy, but winner's final having to go through Eric and then Eric turning things around. And then right after, you know, coming off of a, you know, really hard loss up against Eric, having to go up against Fractal, who decided to just turn it on in game four. And, you know, there could have been, you know, some potential traumas like, no, this is not happening again. I'm not about to get reverse swept again. Oh, and that could have very easily happened, Chris. I mean, that was one of those things where we, we were sitting there going, who knows? Because there was the, the even match was that grand final in more ways than one. Yeah, I mean, the way it played out, it couldn't have been more dramatic. And then, like I said, our scriptwriter was insane. And uh, we should get them, you know, uh, a deal with like HBO or, or Netflix or, or Amazon or something because they really need, you know, high quality content and drama. And this is what we got with with Tetris. Right Tetris here, and it's tournament. live. Yeah, it's, it's live. And then our players had to like perform better than the most talented actors to pull that off and to break all the records at the same time. You know, our, our data dudes are gonna have to go through and find pick, you know, like figure out whose record got broken when, how long that record lasted and all those other great juicy things. So yeah, Honda Fan Cup, Tetris, finale is one for the ages and i can't wait for the next one i really hope uh we get to see another honda fan cup featuring uh tetris effect connected and the classic score attack agree to agree to agree well one of those people that has been working behind the scenes so much for us in these last few days certainly throughout the entire honda cup we want to bring in brian our producer brian doing the business and also with the really cool background come on like <laughs> just give me a break uh how's it going what what are you here to, to to showcase and talk to us about uh first of all i just have to say i'm so glad we got to, to host tetris for this when i first heard that we were going to do tetris a few few months ago i was really excited because like i followed the scene kind of on and off for a couple of years and you know as someone who is kind of being semi you know semi-following um i personally like i came from like doing a lot of stuff with fighting games and and speed running and so this community really just feels at home uh related to a lot of those ones what i love about a game like tetris is you know it's not like a modern game where you uh you know you you get balance patches you get you, you move on to the new game you have a game that's been out since literally the 80s that people have pushed to a level that would have never been seen possible before and you know it's just so cool to see a game that like clearly developers did not think going past a max that was possible or going past where the the colors would be glitched out past a certain level um and getting to see that now moved into you know tetris effect connected on you know new hardware more accessible to new players getting to bring it to new audiences like this it's really cool to see um so I just have to give a big shout out to the whole community for, you know, supporting us with this, joining us for the qualifiers, um, Chris and Sharky holding it down for all the different qualifiers. Uh, the CTWC team were awesome to work with on this. So, um, yeah, just a big shout out to the whole community. Also, the the enhanced team, Shen over there, was also on commentary today. Uh, so, yeah, it was awesome to get to see all this. So thank you guys for, for, for tuning in and uh, Huff for winning. That was I have to say that the best seat in the house is often production because I also get to see you guys popping off behind the camera when the stream can't see. And then the pro the production team is is actually you at the start of the day, I was kind of explaining to some of the production team, like, hey, like you aren't prepared for, for what you're going to see on some of this. Like, trust me, it's going to get really insane. 
And then by the end of the day, the same people were just like explaining it to everyone else in the room and just like super, super like popping off on it. Everyone's popping off watching it. Um, and it's, it's really cool because you get to see a game that like it's so simple in, you know, it's accessible. Everyone can look at it and know what's happening. But just have the the just the that huge level of mastery that these players are getting to show. So I just love to see it. Um, again, thank you to, to you guys holding it down today, the community for supporting it. Uh, it's just been awesome to get to see it all. And of course, a huge thank you, Brian, for organizing everything here. Uh, that's and uh, uh, Chris Sharkey. I'm sorry, I jumped in there, but if you guys want to say anything, I'm, I'm more than happy to stand back. I mean, it's just been a pleasure working and, you know, calling, I'm mean, especially, you know, with Chris Tang, you know, it's always been, you know, a dream. Well, I wouldn't say always because I just got into the scene like three years ago, but it's always been a, a dream for me to, you know, be able to call, you know, some of the best Tetris matches ever seen with, you know, Chris Tang. And he's the one that actually got me in the commentary in the first place. So if anything, you know, real huge shout out to Chris Tang. Thanks. That, that means so much to me. Uh, I really love working with you too, Sharky, uh, because you're so professional and so motivated and just seeing you, you know, create content and becoming, you know, a star commentator of your own is so empowering, not just to, uh, like me, you know, being able to work with you, but to our entire community showing that all of us can become community leaders and, uh, contribute to something like a community that we love, a scene that we love. And, uh, as Brian was saying, like, uh, you know, there's it's this old game, but then it gets played and played and taken to new levels and it keeps expanding, it keeps growing and new interest is on it. And then new players jump in, elevate the scene higher and higher. And I think all of us have a special place in this community of classic Tetris. And uh, Sharky, you're a big part of that. Brian, uh, you've really helped grow our scene by putting us on, you know, the Honda Fan Cup, uh, the Xbox channel, and exposing what we have and the excitement and fun of Classic Tetris to possibly whole new audiences. And because it's on a new platform, thanks to Enhance, you know, they could jump on a modern version of the game that has a classic mode built into it. So whether they like the classic version of the game or, you know, the modern version of Tetris, they'll find something that they love in Tetris Effect Connected. Uh, but then there's this whole underlying community uh, behind it and uh, all the support and how sportsmanship uh, is the core of what we do uh, is the message that we want to spread and being here on the Honda Fan Cup uh, the best part of it is being able to spread that message also one thing I want to say on that uh, you mentioned you know shouting out a hands and all that um, and, and bring bring in new players that's what we love to see from all this uh, anyone who is interested in, in joining a tournament like this uh, enhance runs their own tournaments you can go to their discord discord.gg slash enhance there are also tons of community events for Classic Tetris, like Classic Tetris Monthly. Uh, there's a whole, you know, I love seeing a grassroots community just like take ownership of a game and just really bring it to new, to new levels like that. There is so much love right now in this stream. I am delighted. And by the way, thanks gang for letting me come and be a small part of this epic, epic tournament here today.